Good morning everybody, this is Jean here. Jean True Love from True Love Quotes for You. I was going to be filming outside today because um, I have a little something I want to share. Um, but I woke up and it was raining and it's cold and I was going to put a blanket outside to, to make it all like all, all look a professional. But here I am. I've not even really gotten dressed this morning. And, um, I'm at my little painting studio over here. It's my bedroom over here. Um, as you know, we are in a temporary accommodation uh, here in our, in our son's basement. And I'm going to be uh, just letting you know um, just the cliff notes of what is going on with our family after our disaster, after the disaster. Um, with, as far as our housing goes, I'm sure you're uh, all, uh, the ones who have been following are interested. On September the 1st, we were, as you know, we were um, impacted by the remnants of Hurricane Ida. Um, uh, the tornado touched down in our property. Um, and the uh, floods, flash flooding, uh, came into our home, and we, and our, and our home and our property, we escaped. accommodation in our son's lovely basement as you know um, the reason I'm making this is that I was really um, I was really affected by the recent disaster again weather related in Kentucky and the uh, adjoining states with that 
devastation of the tornado that touched down, the many, many, many tornadoes that touched down, and have rendered people absolutely homeless. Homeless. Um, we do have a home um, that the property was impacted severely by. Um, there's cameras, there are monitors. We're not living there right now. Um, but um, it is going to be fixed and it's going to be hopefully raised, as you know, nine foot in the air because it is in a, a flood prone area. Um, our son had had, our son who owns the home had had plans to do that many years ago, but the cost was prohibitive. Um, now the insurance from the recent hurricane and disaster have hopefully, maybe, <laughs> could be kicking in, but not to the extent that is needed. Um, I always say you have insurance until you need insurance. The insurance um, has been a slow process for our son. He received a check, of course, but of course it was made payable to himself and his wife and the insurance and the mortgage company. Well, the mortgage company got hold of it and said, because <clears throat> he had to submit it to the mortgage company. And of course the mortgage company got hold of it and said, well, we'll give you a, a few thousand here and then, and then we're going to come out and we're going to inspect it and we're going to see if we approve it the, and we're going to do that piecemeal. <laughs> That's just to fix the house that was the, the, the water ruin. This is not about the raising of the home. That's separate. So, anyway, it's making a long process, probably even longer. Uh, we understand that the insurance companies are inundated with um, the, the, the logistics of these disasters that are happening, and we are, we are no exception. However, um, that will happen slowly but surely. The actual raising of the property, which has to be done, now it seems as if because of the disasters and because of the extent of the disaster in our area, the waterways, the, the, the creeks and the rivers and the, um, all of the waterways in our area have almost changed and shifted um, that was perhaps a, 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 a you know, a, on a scale of three to ten flood zone is now a seven to ten. That makes the situation different um, for the township to allow certain things to happen as far as code and zoning. It may happen with my, our son's property, the extent of the damage because of the tornado and the devastation. It may happen, may happen. Um, it's sort of the word on the street is that the um, Army Corps of Engineers uh, are going to have to come in. And they are an organization that sort of is in charge over any township of, um, of the, all of the waterways, levees, lakes, rivers, things like that, big, on a big national level. And they might have to be involved <laughs> as far as permitting, allowing, uh, overseeing. So again, what's, what was basically a straightforward may not be. Uh, our son's property, the five acres, as you know, uh, was, as I was saying, severely impacted by the uh, tree damage from the tornado. And then weeks later, um, the, the last three acres, I have videos on it, the last three acres, according to the, um, the uh, township and FEMA, they, they trespassed on our son's land and, re and, and um, took, took out 88 trees. That's, that was the latest. 88 trees were, were um, wrongly cut down. <laughs> so the property seems <laughs> not to be cursed. We don't ever say that. But it's sort of one bad thing after another. And um, we sort of like just sort of throw our hands up in the air. Um, and when I say we are taking one day at a time, I was reading an, an article, and I'm going to post it down below, of, of people who have survived disasters um, and how they cope with the, the enormity of it all. Um, we, as I keep saying, we, we've been very blessed. We have this lovely accommodation here, although temporary. Um, we don't know if we're going to go back to that house. The major uh, factor in this right now is Maxwell. Maxwell does not 
wanted to move back to our home. He was very traumatized. He um, was not comfortable. Uh, when I go back uh, daily to check on things, that there, there's workers there doing some certain things, I'm collecting the mail, um, he doesn't want to go. And I've been telling you that now for the last several months. It'll be four months next week um, that the disaster happened, that we've been here. And he almost um, daily is like, we, we can stay here, we can stay here. As you know, it's not an ideal situation. We are in the basement of our son's home and Maxwell is two floors away up in the other wing, which he's actually quite comfortable now. He's, he has his rig up there, he has his computers, he has his television. Um, in the second level of the house are our three grandchildren. They come down to visit. So it's really quite lovely. We are so So that's the upshot of it. Um, I'm, I'm like at this point, I'm like, I don't really care. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. I care very, very much. Um, but we always say if something, is, if something is too hard, maybe it's not meant to be. Our hus my husband and I have always sort of gone by that sort of that mantra. You know, if, some, if buying a car is too hard, if, if, if doing something is too hard, uh, if, if anything, if, if, a, if a decision is just too hard, it's not some, maybe meant to be. And I know quite a few of you have said that. Um, I, we had moved, as you know, from our home of 30 years. That was a difficult move, absolutely, absolutely. But, but I was really making, Ian my, Maxwell and I were really making our new at home because we're positive people. We're like not dwelling on the past, it's fine. And oh, Maxwell always says, it's fine, it's fine. Um, we were making our home so lovely. Um, our son and daughter-in-law and all of the children were making it, making it, um, uh, uh, they were making it possible for us to, to live there. It was just so nice and you knew I, I was filming in the woods and the deer and it was just so lovely and I was, I was getting on with it, looking for a happier future. And then, that, then the tornado happened and boy, through no fault of anybody's, it just turned the whole property, the whole situation, the whole home, the whole everything on its head as it has done for many, many homes around here. And because of the insurance situation and because of the, um, the red tape, uh, our son was saying, that's why you see a lot of flood damaged homes sitting. People walk away. People walk away. I was thinking about the folks in Kentucky. They have nothing to walk away from. There is nothing. There is nothing. Which come, I'm not going to go on too much longer. That's our situation. Um, I'll let you know what happens. We're here, and I, and I really mean that. I really mean hand on my heart. Um, we are making the best of our situation here. Our son is, our children are working feverishly. Our 10 children are working feverishly at trying to come up with an um, alternative solution to, to mom and dad looking after us so beautifully. But as for now, um, the winter months, we knew we were going to have to hunker down for the next few months anyway. So here we are. And it brings me to, the, to what I was telling you the other day when Jen, my friend Jen came. As you know, when we moved from our home uh, two years ago, we, I had an Etsy shop at that point. I was selling my quilts. My quilt now is on vacation because I, I almost sort of shut it down because as you know, Etsy had changed its policies. It, it had allowed, Etsy was wonderful, um, a, a, a crafting site for crafters, and then it allowed other things into it. And now there's uh, millions and millions, I mean, hundreds of millions of items that you, you have to shift through. And so hand crafters like myself, it just gets buried. 
and it was harder and harder to sell. Their policies changed, their shipping changed, all this. I stopped, I stopped, because then I started doing my little YouTube adventure here, as I was saying before. I had had my inventory. I had had quite a few. I had a, a, some, several dozen quilts up and put in my friend Jen's attic when we moved, because we had no room in our, pre, our last home. So uh, we sort of all forgot about them. She has like a beautiful cedar closet up in her um, older home, um, and she sort of forgot about them. And I, I was thinking about them just a few weeks ago, and I thought, oh my goodness, Jen mentioned it. So Jen has bought just one, two packages of some of the quilts that I had made that were in my shop, ready to be sold, inventory. Now, I was, I, my last video, Here's just some one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I, th I have about, I might have about 50. <laughs> um, I was thinking, well, I'm going to get them out and I'm going to sell them. And I had mentioned that the last video. There's some really sweet quotes. I'm not going to, I'm not going to unroll roll them. These are just some of the quotes I had made. Um, actually, several years ago. But they have been in um, vacuum packs, Ziploc bags. They're nice and fresh. They're lovely. Um, I thought, oh, I'm going to get out and sell them. And then I got thinking about our, my situation here, how very, our situation, I should say, our family, how very blessed we are, that we are warm, we are well fed, we all have a roof over our heads, we have uh, the necessities of life, we have a few luxuries of life, how very blessed we are, and how others are not so blessed. They've lost everything. And I can, uh, I, can, uh, I can relate to that to a certain small extent. The emptiness and the devastation. Uh, yes, they got out with their lives. That's obviously, obviously the most important thing. But they have nothing left. And I got to thinking, I'm not going to sell my things. I'm going to give them away. I'm going to donate them. I'm going to donate my quilts, the ones that I have left. I'm going to pick out maybe one or two to keep, but I'm going to donate the majority of my quilts. And I thought, I have donated, as I think I linked the link below to jw.org, donate, to slash donate, which is where we have donated before, monetarily. Um, but I also looked up different um, organizations. I have donated to a, a, a local nursing home. Um, I had donated masks, and I had donated some lap quilts and some wheelchair-sized quilts. So these are some larger quilts. But I got thinking about it, um, how I can share with you, if, you, if you're not um, aware of how, how or when or you know, to donate, some suggestions that people um, have done the homework themselves um, for where to donate some quilts to. Now, I had printed this out. There's quite, quite a lot. Um, there's quite a lot here. The Binky Patrol homemade quilts um, are collected for children in need. Um, care for smiles to, to help children in hospitals going through a difficult time. Um, Forever Warm donates blankets of all types to comfort grieving parents after the loss of a baby. There's a whole bunch here. My very own blanket blankets for children in foster care. Of course, Project Linus, which I'm sure you've heard ver much about. Um, handmade quilts to children in need. Uh, quilts from Caring Hands. Quilts for Cops. Um, Quilts for Cops provides comfort for law enforcement officers and first responders that have been injured in the line of duty. So many of so many, that you can just type into your computer where I can donate quilts. But here are some, just in, in general, some places that you can donate. The local hospital, especially children's hospitals. I know for a fact when our uh, little grandbabies were in, um, pre in uh, uh, the NICU unit, because they were premature little twins, um, there was little baby quilts over the isolettes, just small little quilts. Um, the NICU units, um, the local police station. Officers use them to provide comfort to accident victims. Local fire stations to provide comfort for victims of fires. Women's prison, women's shelters, domestic violence shelters, homeless shelters, of course. Maternity homes, pregnancy resource centers, crisis pregnancy centers, family crisis centers, children's centers, um, local child we welfare, lap quilts for the handicapped in wheelchairs and those in low income handicapped apartments, nursing homes, especially those with Alzheimer's patients appreciate, appreciate fidget quilts. 
I was in the process when I lived at our other home of making a fidget quilt, which is just a small little quilt with for Alzheimer's, um, people who, who like to fidget with their fingers, zippers and little buttons and pulls, and they're called fidget quilts. You can look that up also um, for your local nursing homes, long-term convalescent homes, um, local uh, animal shelters, local quilt guilds. Local quilt guilds usually have a program. Um, so as you can see, there's dozens and dozens of places to donate your quilts to, which I'm going to choose a few um, and I'm going to uh, get this on the, on the go. People who have lost everything. And there is, a, of course, there has to be some horrible person. I was reading an article saying, who wants a quilt when they have nothing? And I'm thinking, well, who wouldn't want a quilt? Even in the, even in the hottest of winter, summer times, if there's a disaster and you can wrap yourself in love, okay, it might get dirty and it might get drug on the ground. But especially in the winter time, it's winter time. It's December. These tornadoes hit. These people, I was looking at news. These, the one family burned their, the, what was left of their house. They burned it, sitting, sitting around it in order to keep warm. I mean, when, I mean, you know, compared to, compared to that, we're living in the Taj Mahal here. And boy, oh boy, I and my husband and Maxwell and our family count our blessings really, really strongly every day. So if a silly little quilt is going to help just somebody, just for a few moments, feel, feel the love and feel a little bit of warmth and comfort, then so be it. So that's my video. Um, we are here. Things, like I always say, if it can go wrong, it will. <laughs> we always laugh, the true love touch of poop. It's okay. Um, I, 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 as I say, our, our children, they called a family meeting the other day. Um, as you know, we have nine sons and a daughter. Maxwell was in on it. What can we do to help mom and dad? And they're all, they're all, my, our oldest son is 40, and so they're all in their, their 30s. And um, down to Maxwell, and uh, they are they're putting their their business thinking heads on, and um, going to come up with something for us. Um, I'm not quite sure it's going to be that other house, um, which at this point is okay. It's okay. It, it, as I said, all of a sudden the rug was yanked out from under us, to where we were really getting even with the pandemic we were getting settled, and then. Financially, that was a very good move for us, I must say. But then physically, we didn't count on having a tornado touch down in our property. We didn't count on having people cut down three acres of woods. Our poor son, it's such a shame. One thing after another. But never mind. <laughs> this little cloud seems to follow us around. But actually, it's not. I'm having a good day. I did want to go outside. It's raining um, to show you this. So I'm like here in my little, my little corner here. And my little, my, my paint by numbers I'm doing. And these are just a few of the quilts I'm going to get out from Jen's um, basement. Uh, Jen's out. Oh, and I had found these also. I think I had done tutorials on these. These were little drawstring bags that I had made. I think I did, did tutorials on them. And I'm going to donate them. I'm going to, I'm going to, there's, um, there's organizations that for women, um, for um, maybe homeless women, I believe socks, underwear, and um, sanitary products are the most requested. Makes a lot of sense. So I think what I'm going to be doing is sort of filling a bag, um, one of my little homemade drawstring bags, and donating that. It's just a little thing that we can do. These are just some of the little drawstring bags. These were nice. I did a tutorial on them. They're fully lined. <laughs> Check out my tutorials, right? On a lovely little drawstring bag. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start filling these with some goodies. And there's only, I only have about half a dozen of these. I think they're a little bit wrinkled. Um, but again, I'm going to donate them. And um, yeah, pass the love along. These were all made, my lovely quilts were all made with love um, at, at our, my uh, first house that we had lived in. And I remember making all of them. But if I can pass the love along and somebody can... Um, Feel that and just for a few minutes have a, a bit of comfort then it's all worthwhile so um yeah 
I appreciate all of your love and all of your concern and that will bring you up to snuff about our living situation. But we're living. We, are, we always say that. We're living. We're positive. We're quite happy. Um, we're, we're trying to make the best of a situation. And again, compared to what others have been going through, we are so very, very blessed. And we're blessed to have friends like you guys. So thank you so much for listening to me. And um, yeah, all of you have a lovely day. And as usual, love from the true loves. Bye-bye.